Hey, what's happening, guys? We're going to take another look at the constant current sort, source and sink uh, circuit that we did the other day. I'm going to show you a new one. But first, I want to uh, tell you about a little addition I've made. You know, down to, at the description in every video, you know, I post some information about it and stuff like that. Well, a lot of you guys have asked me for all the equipment I use. You know, what's my oscilloscope, multimeters. Well, I put a link to all that down below. Well, not a link. I posted a list of all that down below along with links to where you can get it if you're interested so I hope that helps some of you guys out and now on to the video alright first of all the other day we did a video where we used a single transistor to make a constant current source or as some of you have pointed out a constant current sink well it would be a constant current uh, negative source or a sink e either way anyway and then I got a bunch of questions and some statements asking well if you varied the input voltage very much it's it's going to change well it, it is somewhat so how can we make this a more stable circuit well we can do that right here let's zoom in let's zoom in there we go so if we take our old circuit, circuit that had the voltage divider here in this leg and we pretty much replace the voltage divider with a pair of diodes, well then we know something. We know that this uh, voltage right here is going to be 0.6 volts. That's the voltage drop. And if we use standard silicon diodes, we can make another voltage drop of 0.6 there so that regardless of the voltage the current will remain the same now is this the most practical way to make a constant current source or sink by the way if you wanted to make this a source you would just swip, sw flip and swap I'm trying to say at the same time if you wanted to make this a constant current source, you would just swap out your NPN transistor for a PNP transistor. The circuit is exactly the same, so it really doesn't matter. Okay, anyway, where was I? Oh, yes. So now, if you vary the voltage, because we have a control on what this voltage is, then this voltage must always be the same. You see where I'm coming from? Regardless of how you turn this VCC up or down, because the base emitter junction we have controlled is locked now, then the uh, collector emitter junction, which is an amplification factor, oh, here comes the trains. That must be a heavy one. It's got shit shaking off my walls. Okay. So, because we have a control of the base emitter junction, and we know that it was not changed, then the current emitter junction also cannot change. Are you with me so far? I think it's a line from an Eagles song. Are you with me so far? Alright, anyway. Here's the circuit. Pretty compact, alright? This is our current limiting uh, resistor for our load. There's our little diodes. 2N2222 hiding in there. Um, emitter resistor to prevent thermal runaway. There's our load. So let me set this up so we can have a look. All right, we've got everything in place for our circuit. Now, let's set our voltage to say six volts. Come on, there we go. Our current, it doesn't matter. It's basically unlimited from the power supply. It'll be limited by the circuit. And then we power it up. And you can see the LEDs there are lit. Now, if we adjust slightly up or down, well, that was too far. See, we went down to three volts, there's a big change. 
But if we just stay within a couple of volts of each other, everything remains the same. Yeah, if you're going to swing five, six volts off, that's not going to work. But this will allow for changes in your VCC and the current to remain the same. Or as close to the same as we need it to remain. Again, let me just reiterate here that I'm teaching basic concepts, not graduate level electronic engineering. See, I just want you guys to be able to grasp the basic stuff of how when we put a certain current into the base, then a function of that current comes out the collector emitter junction. That's the whole point of this. By locking this down, we also lock that down to, an, to a greater extent, of course, because of the amplification, but it's not going to vary due to outside sources somewhat because it will vary due to outside sources you know such as temperature and a wildly swinging VCC all right I hope I cleared that up if not just say so and we'll dive into it deeper and our next um, our next current video is going to be on using something more practical called a current mirror okay well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.